Alright guys, so today we're going to be installing an in-gen short ram intake on this here juke. Uh, it's used, but it's still an in-gen short ram intake, so you'll get the gist of it. Alright, so the first part of doing this process is actually disconnecting the negative terminal on your battery. Uh, the reason we're doing that is we're going to be playing around with the mass airflow sensor and you don't want to be killing that, you don't want to be killing the wiring, you don't want to be hurting the car. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Alright, that's disconnected. Alright, next step, uh, we're going to remove this resonator. This is actually a free mod that you can do. It helps make your intake sound a little louder. Also, less of a chance of something like water being sucked in from the outside of the car, as this is the only inlet into the intake. So to do that, you just lift up on it, and then over here on the other side of the battery, there's a little pull tab. You just lift, and that whole thing just slides out just like that. All right, so now that we have that resonator out, what we're going to do is actually remove the air filter itself from the assembly. Um, so there's a pull tab here, a pull tab here, release those, this drops out, and then this lifts straight up. Uh, this car is missing its battery hold down. It's usually a tight fit behind that, um, so you usually just have to pull up pretty hard, but it's that simple to take the air filter element out. All right, so the next step is to actually unplug the mass airflow sensor. There's a few ways you can do this. If you don't ever plan on putting your stock intake back in, or if you're only going to put it in when you're selling it, you can do it this way, which is these little retainers here. They can be a pain to actually get out, so you can actually just cut the strap part of it, like that, and that frees up your wiring harness. Then what you're going to do is you're going to unplug the mass airflow sensor, and you kind of tuck the wire out of the way. All right, next we need to remove this mounting bolt here. It's a 10 millimeter. Uh, you want to use a ratchet uh, or a wrench to just crack that free and then just pop that out. And that now frees up the top part of that. All right, now we start getting into the trickier parts of this installation. You're going to want a decently long flathead screwdriver. Uh, you're going to follow this accordion tube down and you'll see a worm gear clamp. Uh, it's approximately where my hand is. Uh, you're going to want to reach the screwdriver down there and you just want to loosen that up until the clamp actually starts to kind of move on its own. It's like five or six turns is usually all you need. Uh, and then there's this tube here. Uh, this is actually the recirculation tube for your wastegate control solenoid. You're just going to want to pop that off. Don't lose that hose. Kind of put it somewhere where you can easily get to it. Now you're ready to pull the factory intake out. So you're just going to kind of lift up and then to get the bottom off just kind of got to work it a little bit. And then that is how you take the intake out. All right, so now it's time to take the mass airflow sensor out and put it into your intake. You want to make sure when you're laying this out, you have the intakes facing the correct direction. So the air filter to the right, uh, it just helps uh, when you're swapping the mass airflow sensor over, you don't put everything in backwards because I've seen that happen before. So you're going to want a seven millimeter uh, on a ratchet. Make sure you're loosening it because these bolts do break very easy. You're going to want to go ahead and just take those out. Now when you take the mass airflow sensor out, it's very, very nice to not bang it against things. These sensors are about $300 for an OEM one. So you gently remove that. Now the space where the element actually is, right here, that actually needs to have the air going over it. So if you mix these up, just remember, the side that has the air filter is where you want that. The other side doesn't have anything, this side does. So on our intake here, um, the air filter is on this side, so we want that on that side. So you just slide that back in, and you want to hand tighten these bolts. Like I said, they're very easy to break, and then the threads in this intake are actually made out of aluminum, which means they actually can strip very easily. So if the bolt doesn't break, you're going to strip out the intake. So we got that. And then because it's very easy to break, you kind of just want to snug it. You don't want to tighten it because they're very, very easy to break. That, so that's it. So if you bought your intake new, it's going to have this uh, rubber isolator here, this insulator, whatever you want to call it. 
Um, you're gonna just go ahead and mount that onto the intake itself, and then we'll get back to what you need to do with that in a minute. Then you're also going to want to put your, uh, your coupler on. Uh, have both the clamps on there, not tight, but just secured on so that nothing flops around. I try to have them facing the same angle as this tube, and I'll show you why when we go to put this on. Now the air filter is extremely hard to get in on the side of the battery when you have the intake itself on. So what I typically do is actually take the air filter and actually just, just put it in there um, just so it's already in there. That way when you put the tube in, you can just slide it on there and you're all set. All right, so now we're gonna slide uh, the intake tube in. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is actually get the coupler onto the turbo inlet first and then push it down. But before you do that, you're going to want to actually plug in your mass airflow sensor because the plug is next to impossible to reach otherwise. So we're going to go ahead and slide that in. And then, and angle this. Let it sit in. You want your mounting bolt to go there. Put the air filter on just to kind of hold everything in place. And make adjustments like that. Now, if your Juke is before 2015, uh, this isolator is not going to actually fit into these threads. It actually needs to be threaded in. So you have two options. You can either slightly drill out that hole or you can remove this bracket, which is just one 10 millimeter nut. And then once you have that done, you can just spin it on there and that's good to go. So because we're not gonna ruin this bracket on this car, we're gonna actually take that off and we're gonna thread that on. Now there's a wiring harness retainer on here. This one you do not want to cut. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to squeeze in the sides of this with pliers of some kind. And that'll unlock it. And you should be able to slide it right off. I emphasize the should. Like that. Now it faces this way. So what you're going to want to do is actually lift up your intake. You're going to want to spin that on there. All right, so we have that on. So we're just going to slide everything back in place. Tighten this bracket back down. Now you're probably asking why did I have the bracket put on after you get it in the car? Um, the short answer is I actually forgot that I had to do that because the last time I did an intake on one of these was newer. So, future reference, you can do that first, but like I just showed you, you can actually do it while the intake is in the car still. So that's tightened, we're gonna pop this back in place. Like that. All right, and now we gotta start tightening everything down. So the first thing we're gonna tighten down is actually the coupler in the back. We do the air filter last. So make sure it's on there all the way. You don't want it popping off on you. You're going to want to tighten the one towards the turbo first. And I say that because that is the most important one, so it needs to fit the best. Wiggle it, make sure it's not going anywhere. Then you're going to want to just make sure the other one is nice and tight as well. You don't have to super tighten it. It's not under any pressure, so it's not going to blow off. But you want to give it a couple quick yanks, make sure it's not going to pop off. Then we're going to take this vacuum line from earlier, and we're just going to slide it onto that nipple right there and finally what we need to do is tighten down the air filter you kind of want to position it so it's not going to rub against anything and then it's just a matter of tightening up that clamp so now what's left is tighten up and reinstall your negative battery terminal snug that up and that is how you install an in-gen short ram intake on your juke